Recently, I read a post on LinkedIn where it was a conversation between a hiring manager and a interviewee where the hiring manager was like, hey, I'm glad you're interested in joining this company because we're only interested in hiring 10X engineers, which to the delight of the interviewee who responded with the response of, oh, that's great. I actually only work for 10X salaries. Of course, the hiring manager came back with, a, oh, uh, I just talked to my boss and realized we can only hire a 0.7x engineer. Let's be honest, a lot of decisions that we make in our lives are often focused around money. You know, how much money can we make in a certain position or role, or how much is it going to cost us to live in a certain city versus another? All of these tend to drive decisions around what we do in our lives. But I think it's important to realize that when you're looking at different roles in technology, that if the difference between maybe a data scientist and a data engineering role is maybe $10,000 and you're already passing six figures, you're likely not going to make your life happier if you pick a role that maybe pays more, but you enjoy the work less. Also, I think a lot of people are confused thinking that a lot of people in the US make over six figures. But honestly, when you look at the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, only about, I think it's like seven or 10% of Americans make over $100,000 a year. So if you're already in that top 10%, I think it's better to pick a job that you enjoy versus a job that makes 20 or 30,000 more dollars a year, especially once you consider how much that's going to be taxed. Taking money out of the picture, I think it becomes a little easier to figure out what role you might want in the technology field. But here are some things that you might need to consider on why you shouldn't become a data engineer in 2022. First, unlike data science or data analytics, data engineering is more about having that kind of engineering mindset and discipline versus having this kind of creative problem solving mindset. Obviously, there are problems that we need to solve as data engineers, but oftentimes these solutions are a little more straightforward and clear cut based off of our company standards. Whereas again, with data science and data analytics, they're more focused on the scientific method and answering questions. And in turn, I think are a little more creative on how they actually get to that end result. We as data engineers kind of have a clear end result and we need to follow standards in order to make our code easier to maintain over a long period of time. Without these standards and kind of rules and regulations, it becomes very easy to develop a system that is difficult to maintain for future developers. Even making small changes in your standards, like the casing type or how you make variables or variable data types can cause mayhem down the line because if you need to make a giant code change all of a sudden it can become very difficult if there isn't consistency so there is a little bit more of rigor around what we do as data engineers again although data engineers do play a role in the whole analytics space we also do come into it with a engineering mindset meaning what we build needs to maintain and last for a long period of time and not just be kind of built out for a few days or a few weeks but kind of live on uh, in the future and that means as future people need to come in who have never worked on this project they need to be able to look at it and understand how they can maintain it in the future meaning we need to kind of build it with standards and regulations in place which isn't always fun it can be repetitive you know if you're doing a migration project for example oftentimes all your work is is making sure that your new code is basically a copy pasted version of the old code but in some new language and provides the exact same output right there's no creativity there in terms of like oh i could try doing a totally different solution maybe maybe if you need to optimize it but more than likely if the code's already working correctly you just need to mimic what code a did in code b the output needs to be x equals x you know you don't want new answers you want the exact same answers you got before which again is very restrictive when you're doing work and so if you don't like that kind of restrictive thinking in terms of like having a very clear set of kind of requirements on what your work needs to do this might not be a great role for you and of course we do get to be creative sometimes in how we build solutions um especially once you start thinking about high level solutions, like when someone needs you to build a whole new kind of data infrastructure piece or component, then yeah, you have the ability to be creative, but there are portions of it that tend to be a little more, I think, rigorous, which isn't always fun for everyone who maybe likes to be a little more free and have a lack of rules. There is a difference between doing an analysis for maybe the next three months versus building pipelines that need to exist for the next five years. And I've come into situations where I've seen people have pipelines that have been running for five or 10 years even, and had no problems. It's almost kind of crazy to think about how effective some people's engineering has been in the past. But for those who think that, you know, data engineering is going to be boring, 
don't worry, my second point will kind of hopefully dispel that myth, which is you will need to be very flexible as a data engineer for the work that you take on. If you've watched my video on software engineering versus data engineering, one of the things that I talk about is the fact that data engineering really is a spectrum. You know, there isn't like one type of data engineer. Some tend to be more focused on the analytics. Some tend to be more focused on like the DevOps infrastructure and others tend to be focused more on the programming. All probably play some role in the data engineering field, but they all have a different way of going about it. The problem is, depending on the company that you work at, you might have to take on all of these roles or a different role per company. So you need to be willing to be flexible in that kind of regard. If you prefer programming and then work for a company that uses things like Azure Data Factory or SSIS, you might be disappointed and leave that company very quickly because you weren't able to kind of switch to that mindset of using more tools versus programming things from a custom standpoint. Or on the flip side, if you are a tool-based kind of data engineer or ETL developer, you might also run into the same problem if you go somewhere where they're doing only programming. So it's important that you understand that as a data engineer, we have to kind of be flexible and be very quick to adapt to whatever tooling or situations that we're dealing with. We might also be asked in some companies to do more ML ops work where we're actually having to deploy machine learning code versus another role where we're mostly doing like data integrations or migrations. So we just have so many different types of tasks that we take on that data engineers need to be ready and flexible to switch and adapt to whatever their kind of company needs them to. Some days you'll be more of a software engineer. Other days you might be doing more of analytical work and on other days you'll just be doing data modeling. There are so many different disciplines that have kind of come together to create the data engineer that we're kind of still figuring out. What exactly do we do sometimes? Are we data modelers? Are we ETL developers? Are we software engineers? Are we just analysts that have some pipelining understanding? It is such a, again, a broad field that you need to be ready that each company you work for might have different expectations. Just as a test, I would love it if you posted below what you think data engineers should do at a company, or maybe what you as a data engineer are doing at a company. And let's see the different kind of perspectives we get from all of you data engineers out there. Now, my next point is the springtime of youth must never end. And for my weeboos out there who got that, thank you so much for being in my audience. But what I basically mean is as a data engineer, learning never stops. There is no ability to eventually rest on your laurels because technology is constantly shifting. People in the comments are constantly asking me like, you know, what technology should I learn? You know, what is the right tools? And the thing is I can tell you now what you should learn. And in three years from now, I will be wrong because technology is constantly shifting. 10 years ago, things like Snowflake weren't an option or at least not a popular one. And now I'd say it's starting to take over a lot of data engineering teams. 10 years ago, I'd say a lot of companies were trying to put some form of Hadoop into their whole system. And now I'd say a lot of companies have shifted away from that or at the very least abstracted away from it. So if you're not willing to constantly keep up with technology, what's changing, what's new, what is going to be happening, not just now, but in the next five years, more than likely data engineering is not going to be for you. And that's the same with most technical roles because regardless of the technical role you pick, things are going to change. People are gonna go, hey, should we do monolithic or microservices? Are we gonna do serverless? Or are we gonna do you know, classic kind of having our own on-prem systems? Like what are we building? There are so many new ways to design, build and implement systems as well as just new tools coming out on a daily basis that resting on your laurels, becoming sloppy in a way, or at least kind of giving up on learning what's coming out isn't an option for people in the world of technology. So learning is a must and you need to keep up with things. And if you're not constantly curious on what's changing, you're eventually going to get left behind. There will always be companies who are kind of using maybe older tools or tools that maybe are no longer in place at other companies because it does take a while to migrate and switch solutions, but most companies are tending to run forward and try to grab the best options and newest tools because of the promise of them making those companies' lives easier. So if you're not willing to learn as a data engineer constantly, you're eventually gonna find yourself in a situation where you're just left behind and everyone is somewhere else in the distance while you're still doing what people were doing five or 10 years ago. And with the recent funding rounds that I've seen in tools like Fivetran and Matillion and so on, you can kind of see why the world's going to shift again, probably in the next five or 10 years in terms of how we ingest data, how we store it and how we manage it. So resting on your laurels is not an option. 
you need to constantly be learning while also balancing your current operational needs. And I would say this is even more important for people with experience because people with experience will realize that many of these tools aren't that different than what has currently been in place, at least in the role that they play. So they can bring their experience and help younger engineers implement these solutions effectively as long as they kind of understand it from a higher level. You don't necessarily need to understand the details. You just need to know what's the role that it plays and then implement your experience, your best practices into actually implementing it effectively. Because new engineers always need guidance, but sometimes if there's no one there that understands at least from a high level of those tools, it can be difficult to actually guide them. Finally, it's really important, I think, in any technical role to know yourself. Do you like having all of the attention on you or do you like kind of hiding away in the back end? If you like the attention, if you like being in front of maybe directors, talking constantly, then maybe being something like a data scientist is more for you where you're constantly kind of driving conversations with things like product managers and directors and managers in general. Whereas as a data engineer, you might drive some of those conversations if you really want, but also it's much easier to kind of hide away in the back end and just create data sets. You do have that kind of ability to just hide away and not get too much attention for multiple reasons. One being that I think a lot of people think data science is just the coolest role. Somehow, again, that article from 2012 about data science being the sexiest role continues to have major impacts on how people think, but this allows us data engineers to kind of do our work quietly in the background. And if that's what you prefer, because maybe you're more introverted or maybe you're like me and kind of an introverted extrovert where you kind of are chill just hanging out by yourself or can get very excited out in a group of people, then data engineering might be a great fit for you. But again, if you prefer kind of conversing with a lot of different people, getting a lot of different perspectives into place, working with a lot of cross-functional partners, data engineering might not be for you because you're gonna be so focused on just staring at your keyboard. It's just the work that we do. Now, personally, again, I kind of fit into both camps, so I enjoy the data engineering aspect of it, but I also love kind of doing consulting where I actually do drive a lot of conversations at a higher level, and it's a lot of fun. And I'm thinking about putting together a video about how to be a little more political as like a data engineer, because I've learned a lot in even that realm in terms of being a consultant and learning how to drive conversations and projects forward when you don't have a lot of power, because especially as a consultant, you just don't. So if anyone wants to see that video, let me know below. But other than that, these are the reasons you should probably not become a data engineer. I've made plenty of videos of why you should become a data engineer as well as the challenges of being one. So I wanted to also kind of flip it on its head and say, hey, here's some reasons why you shouldn't become a data engineer. And if you have any questions about being a data engineer or some of the tools that we are using, please let me know. And other than that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time and goodbye.